Okay, picking up where we left off, after signing the Declaration of Independence, each state drew up its own constitution. And most states also created a Bill of Rights to go along with their state constitutions. As you can see, the definition of a constitution is a plan of government, and a Bill of Rights is a list of essential freedoms guaranteed to citizens. Now, both of those words can be used in a general sense, and they can be very specific. So, a general constitution is just a written plan of government, while the Constitution with a capital C is the United States plan of government. Same thing goes for the Bill of Rights. Um, New York, they wrote their constitution in 1777, and it served as a model for the United States government. It had three branches of government, and those three branches are the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. And the legislative branch makes the laws, the executive branch enforces the laws, and the judicial branch judges violations of the laws and also interprets the laws that the legislative branch passes. And we'll go into each of those branches much more as we get through, go through this unit. Each of the branches has a leading group or a, an individual that is in charge of the branch. The legislative branch is run by Congress, and in, the, in New York State, there is a Congress made up of the representatives and the Senate, as well as in the United States, the same thing. It has a Congress with two houses. The Congress, or the Congress is made up of the senators, or the Senate, and the House of Representatives. The executive branch in New York is run by the governor, Governor Cuomo. And in the United States, the executive branch is run by the president, President Obama. The judicial branch in both New York State and the federal government is run by the Supreme Court. During the American Revolution, the Second Continental Congress was in charge of the nation, and it was the group that declared the colony's independence. It ran the war, or tried to run the war, and made alliances with France and other countries. And But the thing about it is that it had no written authority from the states or the people to even exist. So basically it was representatives or these mostly powerful men who decided that they were tired of the British running the colonies. They wanted to create their own country, so they spoke for the rest of the people and declared independence and then waged the war. In 1777, two years into the war, Congress, this group of people, which we'll call Congress, the Second Continental Congress, they agreed to form a confederation in order to run the nation. Congress created a document called the Articles of Confederation, and each state had to ratify the document. Now, as you can see there, a confederation is a loose union of independent states, they are not bound tightly. They uh, can choose to work with one another. They can choose not to. Ratify means to approve. Just a fancy word, uh, a fancy way to say yes, approve. By 1781, all the states ratified the Articles of Confederation, and the United States government began being run by the Articles of Confederation. Now, there were problems with the Articles of Confederation, and um, some problems were that the government was way too weak and it didn't have the power to tax the people to raise money. It didn't have the power to really enforce its laws. And it, it wasn't able to control the changes that were happening in the country. So by 1786, there was an uprising in Massachusetts. And what happened was um, Massachusetts farmers couldn't pay their taxes. And so Massachusetts... The government was taking their land and putting the, the owners in jail. And so, of course, if they're in jail, they can't sell their crops and repay their debts. And so finally, a group led by Daniel Shays, a, a uh, American Revolution soldier, and a bunch of his buddies, they went and took over the courts and the, the state house in Massachusetts. And they even tried to capture a federal arsenal to get weapons. Um, and the, what was interesting is the the national government couldn't stop him because they were basically the Massachusetts militia. 
Uh, they were well armed, they were well organized, and the national government couldn't do anything to stop them because they couldn't raise an army. They didn't have that power. And so Daniel Shays and his group kind of ran rampant all over the state for a few months and really showed that the Articles of Confederation were just way too weak. So after um, after George Washington and others in the government went and talked him down and made some agreements with him, they realized that, you know what, we need to change our government. We need to get a government that is powerful enough to raise an army, for one, to collect taxes, to make laws that people will obey. And that is the end of this this lecture. We're going to move on to the uh, United States government now in just a moment. Have a good night. Yeah.